So um, that, there's nobody in the attendee list. So Bennett, can I make you co-host? Um, sure. I don't. I don't even know what. What responsibilities does that require of me? Julian's coming in and Britt is coming in promoting to panelists. Um, Would you rather, uh, I was planning on taking notes, but. Oh, no, 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 whatever. that's what we want. Oh, okay, yep. Okay. I think Julian said he, oh, there he is. Okay, he was having the same message that I was getting. Yeah, we all had that. Alan um, had no uh, sil uh, no signal. He was trying to join the meeting and start the meeting. So he Got finally it. was able to join long enough to do this, but we couldn't hear him. So there's an invite link. I don't have, uh, what was her name? The woman who came? Come on, brain. Can't remember. Was it Lindsay? I think so. Julian, was it Lindsay, the woman who joined us Saturday? Lindsay Watkins, yes. Um, okay. That's who was here last time. And uh, Alan, I believe, is on vacation with his... Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we already dealt with Alan. <laughs> He's right. going to try to join again. He, awesome. Um, so if I make you host, Bennett, you can then um, invite Lindsay, unless you can invite her out of participants where you are now. Click on the arrow next to participants. Yeah. <clears throat> Invite. Yeah, no, I, I don't I can't do anything. Okay, so I'm gonna promote you to host. And then you'll be able to do that. Make co-host. Okay. And um We all should have the minutes and the um, agenda, so I don't have to share them, right? Because that gets right. complicated. To that was why I'd make you someone a co-host was to yep. use that. All right. Slow start once again. Yeah. Julian is still there. I yep, I'm just grabbing a drink. Sorry. Okay, no problem. Just wanted to check in. So we have a quorum. I don't know if Sarah is coming. I thought she was, but uh, we can start without her. And start without Lindsay. Did we not have an, we had an August meeting, didn't we? No, we had our. Um, we had the picnic. That's right. Okay. Yeah. So, all right. Um, can we approve the minutes? Did everyone read them? And oh my goodness. Sorry, I got let me lower this curtain. It's a little better. Okay. Um, can we approve the minutes? All in favor? Thumbs up. Yeah. Aye. Okay, minutes are approved. And let's do hours while we're doing this. Um, Ellen? Just to be clear, this would be from July since we didn't record hours last month. Um, I don't remember. Um, I, I don't think we recorded because we didn't have our meeting, right? Yeah, but I might've taken minutes anyway. Um, right, I feel me... like you did. I, I remember you taking them. Uh, let me look real quick. It's on Google Drive. Actually, could someone check that? I added the uh, the hours to the Google Drive. I'll race you. I'll see if I can do it. Oops, not that one. Drive. Maybe I didn't know to drive. I don't remember reporting hours for last month, but 
Uh, I won't see it in Drive, so let me look here. The account saying it needs to verify through Shoshona's iPhone or something. What is showing that? Uh, the Google Drive account. Oh, it has like a dual factor authentication thing that goes. Exactly. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, I have no hours on there. Oops, I just crushed, shut the wrong one. I have no hours, so we need to do hours. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Put me down for seven. So, I'm sorry, uh, Ellen, since July, how many? Oh, God, I don't know, four? <laughs> I'm not okay. sure. Bennett? Seven. Okay. Uh, Britt? I'm going to say seven. Julian? Fifteen. Okay. Uh, how many for me? I don't remember either. Um, I'll say... Yeah, probably 15. Well, you were at all the events I was at, so oh. it probably is about the same. Okay. And then we had one person who joined us for the um, the inventory, so she gets uh, three hours for that. Put that down as adult volunteers. All right. Uh, so I don't know where she is. Still not showing up. Did you send her an invite, Bennett? I'm sorry. I don't know how to send her an invite. I don't have her email address. Oh, Maybe I, I do have her email address. I got it the other day, didn't dude, I? That's why I suggested you yeah. do it to me. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. No apologies. Yeah, it's not... All right. So now the agenda... Oh, it's frustrating not having Alan. He said he was going to be here and then he couldn't make it in. All right. So we approved the minutes of the hours, the chair's report. Should I do that now? Yeah. Um, I was looking through old notes about the committee and things we talked about doing. And one of the things that came up was Alan um said that uh Guilford had wanted us to write something up about the loss of ash trees in Amherst and we've never done that so if somebody wants to take that on write up some sort of I guess it would be an op-ed letter or something that we'd put out saying this is what's happening with ash trees in the world and you know in our town yeah so the audience for that is just to kind of communicate to the public why the town is removing these ash trees, given the broader context of emerald ash borer, et cetera. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. And we could include other trees too, but um, specifically focus on that. So think about okay. that. It'd be good if someone would write that. And the Gazette would be the target, or what's the. Yeah. We also put it on our website and, you know, other places, um, the Facebook. Um, Okay, so just like an internal, like not necessarily, just public facing like from the committee, but not necessarily a third party publication. What do you mean third party? Like like external to us, like the Gazette or something. No, no, I, I would say get it into the Gazette, yeah. Okay. That's the way to reach the most people, get it into the Indy, you know, maybe a press release that we send out to both of them. And even WWLP or something like that, NPR, you know, or you know, the yeah, the media. Um, I guess I could do that. All right, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've uh, noted that in the in the uh, minutes. And you put you put <laughs> names in red when people say they'll do things, right? I'm gonna write this down for myself so I actually do it. Okay. Yeah, so you've is this a, a lot of things, Britt, so thank you. But, uh, you know, it, we all need to be doing that a little bit. Um, the, I, I, have a, I have a question about that real quick. Um, is this in response? Are, are people asking about what's going on? Like, is it in response to any sort of public question about tree removal? Or it's just a proactive 
this is what's going on. Here's how we're like uh, addressing it type thing. Yeah, I think it'd be better if Alan was here, but I think so far it's um it's been um they haven't taken down that many yet. But it's you know the tip of the iceberg. There's about to be a lot of them taken down. So it's I proactive. My understanding is Guilford and Alan just want the public to be aware because it'll be a bit surprising when these relatively large trees have to come down, understanding that they otherwise would be living with exception of this disease. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so maybe it's a broader piece that talks a little bit about like New England forest health. Um, and I was at the talk at the Tree City USA Awards where the head of forest health for for DCR gave like an absolutely comprehensive and fascinating talk on all of these challenges, including emerald ash borer. Um, so I can write something short. Maybe more like a letter than a full op-ed. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and I guess it could be on like, like from the committee so I could send it to everybody first or? Yeah. Okay. Should we take some photos of those trees that are coming down so people are aware it's going to happen? Just to include with the article? That's good. Yeah. yeah. I, wa I walked by, I know a bunch of them are supposed to come down at Kendrick Park right at the tip of that park there. And I walked by this morning on the way to work and there were a bunch of town trucks there and I thought that's what was happening and it was actually just like a, a water project I think or some they're connecting a uh sewer and water line okay. from the street into the park because there's been a grant to put bathrooms in Toilet, the park. that's right yes that's right okay so that's what that was so do we know what the timeline is then Julian for the removal of these trees like like how fast do we if 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 um they're wanting this out preemptively, right? Like, what is the timeline? And maybe you don't know that. Maybe only Alan knows that. But Yeah, I mean, it depends on how quickly the disease progresses here in Amherst. But I would assume we'll probably start seeing it next spring. No, I think they're planning to take them down this fall. This I'm fall? just wondering, like, when. I think that's what oh, Alan said. Okay. Yeah. I was They're thinking next spring, but um, may, maybe I'm incorrect. You would have to ask him to be completely sure. Yeah, I don't think they're taking them down to prevent the beetles from spreading. I think right. it's they're already there. they're already yeah. gone. Yeah. I think they're taking them down because the trees are going to be at risk of falling fairly quickly right. once they start dying. Right. And it'd be great to get a photo of the top of that park because those are all ash trees that are all dying. So yeah. yeah. Um, yeah okay i can i'll i'll when i walk to campus on thursday morning i'll do that okay great um yeah, no other attendees so okay check that all right um then um the dcr is doing another tree steward training it's october 13th and 27th and it's a really great program uh, some of us have been through that i haven't actually but sarah has julie and you have right yeah so it's a two-day training. It's not very expensive, but if you need help, the committee can help pay for that. We've done that before. So um, anybody and wants Henry, to- where, where do we find information about that? Um, I'll send out the link. Um, it's in the um, the, uh, Urban Far the Urban Forest, the newsletter that comes out. Got it. Okay. Yeah, that's where, that's where it is. So, or just, you know, Mass DCR, it should be there too. Sure. Um, there's a new pest that Alan would probably tell us about. Uh, I don't think it's in Amherst yet. It's called the Elm Zigzag Sawfly. Great name, but uh, they attack the leaves and can defoliate elms that are already struggling from other things. So I think it's a comorbidity kind of thing. Um, Alan um, asked me about the block party and it just hit at a bad time and I didn't bring it up to the group, but. I think we have a table if we want a table at the block party. Um, I don't think I can be there. That's one problem, but. Um, you were stilting last year. That was a few years ago. No, last year you were on stilts. I remember. I don't think it was anyway, me. Anyway, whatever. Yeah. 
I was uh, there at one point, but it's been some years, I think. Yeah. Um, so does anybody want to take that on and I'd be contacting Alan and finding out what uh it's Thursday week is this Thursday or week from week from Thursday? It's the twenty first, I believe. Yeah, so a week from Thursday. Yeah, we don't have to do it. It's just another opportunity to get word out about uh, the ash trees and, and other things. <laughs> Is the block party going that far down, down to Kendrick Park? It does go down to Kendrick Park, I think. It yeah. does. Um, I know the DPW will be there and have some resources and stuff like that at the block party. But I'm not sure if we want to set up near one of their trucks or if we want to set up near Kendrick Park or what we we would think is best. I think Alan reserved us a table in case we wanted. Oh, awesome. Okay. So, but it just requires getting the literature and the signs and getting them up and staffing it. Nice. Yeah. I feel like we would do, we would be better served spending our time at public facing events when we have the inventory stuff sorted out to publicize that and solicit volunteers for that. Yeah. But I suppose we could also use that to solicit volunteers or have people sign up. Um, and I have some like nice looking signage that my students created last spring for their like tree, their tree fest event that was related to the inventory actually. Um, and how people could look at the inventory and, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so whether that becomes relevant for next Thursday or a future event, you know, I have a bunch of stuff that we can use at tables in the future including also like a tree trivia game that they made um with like you spin a wheel and then you get categories and um signs for different trees in amherst that kind of thing so i have like a ton of materials that came from that that's really yeah. fun i love that yeah and we also have the signs that bennett uh, wrote the slogans for the the lawn signs and uh, we have some flyers and things yeah but, you know, especially, you know, next spring, we'll be at the same sustainability festival again. Right. And uh, we probably maybe need a subcommittee to work on tabling and, you know, how our display is going to look and what type of things we put out and what we need. Right. So, um, so keep that. I hate, hate giving out flyers. It just feels like it's <laughs> antithetical to what we do. Yeah, we use yeah. for our stuff, we used signs with QR codes, yeah. you know, so you could just mm -hmm. take your phone and do our great yeah. website. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. But I don't yeah. personally feel particularly moved to table next Thursday, but if others are tabling, I will participate. I feel like we always get lost in the shuffle of other stuff at that, at the block party. Like the sustainability festival is much right. more like, not that, you know, I mean, there's a, you could make the case that, well, we need to be in places that are unexpected because, because of that reason alone, but I don't know, man, the block party is pretty chaotic. And I feel like we're just, you know, if we have like when the past, I think we had giveaways or pen, I don't know what we gave away in the past, but it's just like, Hey, here's a thing. You just <laughs> throwing stuff out and yeah. not really making an impact. Yeah. Although we reach people who are less aware of the issue, perhaps. Sure. Yeah, yep. I think the most useful thing is not that we're giving out flyers, but that people come up to us and talk to us about trees. That's so. true. And it is less of a self-selecting audience than the sustainability fest, for example. That's true. Yep. Although a higher drinking audience. <laughs> yeah. More likely to sign up for the newsletter. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> well, now you've got my attention. We can get over 200 subscribers. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Um, I was I was just thinking um, with the but we have to talk to Alan with the ash trees um, coming down. If there was a way to use that as a public service announcement thing at, during block party, but it seems kind of depressing 
a block party is pretty celebratory and we'd just be a downer. <laughs> so I probably just didn't do that. <laughs> Somebody, I can't remember if it was some DCR. I feel like it was a DCR event. They were giving out Emerald Ash Borer tattoos. <laughs> nice. that's, 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 that's exciting. That's yeah. relevant. There were Asian longhorn beetle tattoos before that. Yes. Yeah, I might have one of those somewhere too. Um, yeah, that's a good point. And I guess back to this, to the ash trees coming down, there's this question of, what to do with the wood other than just chip it. And I guess there's no other space on the agenda for me to report this, but I had volunteered to connect with Sean Mahoney of DCR who runs their, um, I don't remember what they call it, but he had given this presentation in June or May uh, about reusing wood from decommissioned public trees and so he was on parental leave. So we finally connected and we need to have a phone call um, to share, you know, to, to kind of like hear his ideas for Amherst and, and talk a little bit about things. And my understanding is that he's based part time at UMass. So he's he's in the area. Um, so I will follow up on that with him. I just got a reply from him like last week and I just haven't had a chance to to follow up on that. But perhaps the emerald, um, sorry, the ash trees, you know, maybe that's an opportunity to think about using the wood in a, in a different way than just chipping. Yeah. One second. No, spam call. All right. Um, yeah, well, that's, that is on, you know, it's, it's in my notes. I was, didn't get to it okay. yet. Okay. Wood bank, you've talked about the wood bank before. No, yeah. it's fine. It's good to bring Yeah, it not up. just wood bank, but also like other ideas around that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Um, what else? Oh, I got a phone call this morning. I was sitting at my desk and the phone rang and it was a woman from the Gazette who wanted to interview me because I had signed on to the, uh, the letter supporting the municipal, uh, forest bill in state house. And I'm not sure how she got my number, but anyway, she called and we had a nice chat. She asked why it was important, why it was important for Amherst. And, uh, it's going to be, I think in tomorrow's Gazette, but maybe not tomorrow, but soon. So that was nice. Um, and then uh, Mindy sent an email around that you forwarded, but I also got it from her. Um, and the hearing is tonight. Um, it's happening. Right now, yeah. Right now, or yeah, started at six, I think. So um, um, we could join later. It's a hearing on uh, using forests as climate solutions, which is the opposite of using forests to put up solar farms, you know, so. It'd be good if someone can go to that after we're done here. What time does it go until? I think it goes till 8 or 8.30. Okay. <coughs> Julie. Julian, you've been more involved than that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think I have another meeting at 7, but if it goes till 8.30, I'll go then yeah. on. Ju Julian's got homework like literal things that have to be done tonight, right? <laughs> no, no, that is, uh, that is, I have a meeting at seven and then I, um, and then if I would go to this at eight, I'd go to that till 8.30, hopefully. And after that, I have four pieces of AP homework, which will probably keep me up late at night. <laughs> if I ever take your class at UMass, you'll, I'll be asking you to not give me homework. <laughs> <laughs> But you'll want to do her homework. Yeah, fair point. point. Fair point there. All right. Uh, other things for the chair's report. Um, ash trees, do training. Oh, I think um, we need a, a PR committee or subcommittee in general, or someone to be like the head of PR. Um, you know, Phyllis, uh, can't think of her last name, has a column every week in the bulletin. Um, Scott Mersbach will put her. Phyllis Laher. Yeah, there's the Amherst Indy. There's lots of places that we could be talking up trees or getting our events published, you know? Like Phyllis would be happy to put a bit saying, you know, the tree committee has a meeting or the tree committee has a, a inventory coming up. So, but we have to reach out to get yes. get all those things. And I have not been that good at that. I, that I agree. I think a PR type thing, it would be more in depth. I feel like social media is almost just... Yeah 
surface level type stuff, not um, not as in depth out in the community as we sh should be going. Yeah, I think that's one way the committee is not succeeding right now. Um, we don't have someone doing that and reaching out. So. I feel like everything that we have put in the papers has actually gotten quite a response. Like um, when we publicized the Mary Maple event last year um, and when we publicized uh, or somebody actually, con I don't even remember who it was. Somebody contacted me and said, can I publicize that you are giving away pieces of the Mary Maple from your home and have them email you? And I was like, sure. And then I got like 60 emails from people in the community who hadn't otherwise heard about it. Um, so I think the papers are a tool for connecting with, you know, folks over 25 uh, or 30, maybe like over 40, I don't know. Uh, older folks who are not as plugged in on the social media side of things. Um, but I think we need to do this on social media too. Yes, uh, of course. Shoshana was posting and she's really hasn't done much at all. So I've done the last bunch of posting and it's always last minute and I'm not great with social media. So, um, yeah, I I'm happy to take over. I don't do, I haven't done Facebook in like 12 years. I don't, I don't know how that works these days, but the Instagram stuff, I'm happy to take that over if that's helpful. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's helpful, but I'll put that out there. Well, Julian's been doing Instagram, but um, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, if you want to do it, it's another thing off of my back. That's awesome. But um, I'm happy to do the Instagram stuff because I feel like I've seen a lot of like other posts recently where I'm like, oh, we could share that. Yeah. You I'm know, just thinking maybe years. if you want to do the Instagram stuff, I could try to uh, at least be a point person for maybe writing some stuff in the newspaper. Cool. Yeah, sure. Well, I just need like the login info at some point then. I uh, will email that to you right now. Great. And Bennett, on the um, emails you send out, does it include our Instagram and Facebook thing? Yeah, great. Okay. Yeah, it says like we're friends, right? Oh yeah, yeah. So probably updated, but that one's yeah. easy. Um, the other thing that I could do is, you know, I mean, uh, I could like, uh, what's her name, and uh, Phyllis, for example, like. I could always forward thing, you know, like after the newsletter goes out and she's, for example, is on our list, but you know, I could forward it to her to Mindy or whoever and say, special note, wanted you to see this. Um, you know, we have, uh, you know, an upcoming tree inventory event. would love to get people out for that or something like that, which is not quite a full, you know, full flight PR strategy, but better than what we're doing yeah. that, that'd be great if you did that every month that would be a big help okay and and bennett art keen at the indie i think they're hungry for content and so i think anything that you send him about events and such will he'll just automatically put that in there i agree they tend to post pretty much everything on the town website as well yeah. just to get that out there so that's but great if we added like a paragraph or a couple of sentences or something about you know this is what's happening beyond what's available on the town website i i know that that he would share that and i was surprised they get like forty thousand something views for a little blog hmm. you do okay what's um the guy's name Art Keen, K-E-E-N-E. -E -E. He was a professor at UMass at some point. I, I can't remember what department, but he, I mean, he's reached out to me and said like, hey, will you write a column about hiking in Amherst? And like, I don't, I, I don't have the time, um, but, um, you know, and then he, like when we did the Mary Maple stuff and it was in the Gazette, he reached out to me and said, could we include, could we publish this in the indie? Would you write up like what you said at that event? Like they're supporters of trees and I think interested in helping to spread the word in whatever way they can. So. Great. I think that'd be a big step toward that. Um, yeah. That's something uh, I think I'll change on the agenda. It says right now, social media. I think I'm going to just say PR and media in general. Yeah. Good. All right. Um, the only other thing I have for the chair's report is uh, that I'm thinking of stepping down as chair. 
And Julian's interest in being chair, although maybe he has too much work going on, I don't know. What do you think? I think I, I would do it, but I don't think I'd do as good a job of it as you, partly because I have so much going on and partly uh, because I don't have as much experience as you do at it, but I would take my best shot at it and welcome everybody's criticism of how to do better. <laughs> what I would suggest also, Julian, is like, feel free to protect your time and your senior year of high school. <laughs> and um, like, it's okay. I feel like learning to say no to things is something that many of us develop as a, a skill later on in life. So like, Especially it's, in also, town it's also okay to say no yeah. to things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Says the person who agreed to write the op-ed about the ash borers. Yes, I need to take my own lessons all the yes. time, I, and I don't. So I empathize, Julian, with your... Gotcha. No, my friends are telling me the same thing, but I'm always like, go get it, go get it. So the youngest I... chair of the two <laughs> town history. It, it sure. would look pretty cool. <laughs> Jane Fonda said she didn't learn that no was a complete sentence till she was in her 80s. So, yeah, <laughs> especially true of women. Nice. Hard to say no. But, um, Julian, thank you. If you step up, um, yeah. you will definitely get support from all of us. Awesome. And if I do want to step down and Julian doesn't want to, somebody else might think about becoming the chair. So keep that in mind. If anyone's interested, please. I don't want to stifle anyone's interest. <laughs> That's very kind of you. Yeah. Um, is anyone, by the way, coming up for re-election? Or I guess, re you know, the three years, I guess that'd be next June or something. My term ends in 25, I think, in June. Okay. I just got reinstated. Um, I got the paperwork in July, but I just got sworn in to this morning. So, Look at, so you can I vote again. finally officially did it. <laughs> Um, yeah all right uh that's all for the chair's report um uh, julian do you have something to add for the vice chair uh i was just gonna say about the i've noticed quite a lot of the leaves falling off of apple trees and other little ornamental trees like that um so i noticed that and then the other thing that i think is worth noting that I spoke about a little via email, but I really want to get to the bottom of what happened with that Amherst College tree, because I understand Alan seemed to lay out a great process and the town's trying to be as on them as they can about it. But at the same time, I do, I guess, wonder, I don't want to start a pattern where Amherst College feels like, well, if we dig a little too close here or do this there, we can skirt around the committee's decision this is on south pleasant street yeah i get so mad every time i drive by it and it That's just um, makes me feel like um i mean i don't take it personally but it makes me feel as a committee member you know it just emphasizes how little say we have on yeah. such things i mean it make it makes me feel like <laughs> we have a big institution here and like, it sort of feels like almost as if the laws don't apply to them sometimes, which doesn't seem right. I hesitate to share this in a publicly recorded meeting, but they are coming to survey my property line, which I share with Amherst College. Um, and it's difficult to think that it's a coincidence. Um, after speaking out about their tree practices. Um, you know, anyway. Yeah. All right, anything else, Julian? Nope, I think, uh, I think mostly that's it. We got two pretty big trees that fell down at Mill River, um, mm -hmm. which were interesting, but I think that bank makes them very prone to falling over. This Mill River playground? Yeah. Okay. All right, we'll skip the tree warden's report. Uh, <laughs> Treasurer's report. Our balance is 9,355 and 29 cents. Okay. 
you tell me when you're ready for another bite? Um, at what point does the line item in the budget, like, like how do those funds work? That's a great question. And that was something that I wanted to talk to Alan about. So I guess it'll be tabled until next month because I'm not sure if the way the money flow works is whether it comes into the Shade Tree Committee account or if it's tied into Alan's DPW account. And then when he buys the trees, it just won't be deducted from our account. Right. Do you have something to add to that, Henry? Yeah, I can. I've spoken to Alan about it. It goes into Alan's account. Okay. And the fact that it does not have to be used for purchasing new trees. He can use it for anything tree related. So what he recommended is that we buy a lot of the trees. I think it starts in June or July 1st, whenever the fiscal year starts. Um, and he recommends we just buy a lot of trees then or, you know, so that we've used up the money. So then he can't use it for other things like tree removal. And this is his suggestion. And I think that's a good idea. So, um, yeah, but we won't have direct uh, use of that money. Um, that sounds fine to me. And I'm happy in the treasurer role to keep track of of that. Um, how much we buy and then kind of divide it out and see how far it'll get us for plantings, depending on how big the specific sites are and that sort of thing. Um, I can keep like, you know, an, an Excel spreadsheet or something and kind of keep track of it. Um, my initial hesitation is that July is a hard time to buy plants and keep them alive for an extended period of time. So is there a way we can coordinate that with the tree nursery that we were are planning to do, Henry, and then get kind of just like a regular regime going for watering to make sure they stay alive during the really hot times we've been having? We can do that. I think we don't have to take possession of the trees. So we can contract with Amherst Nursery or with another place and say, you know, we want this many trees, here's the money, and then they hold them until we're ready for them. I okay. think that's how Adam does most of his stuff. So Great. Do you know if Amherst Nursery is the one we use the most? It has been the one. I'm not sure what's happening now, but. I, I think okay. Alan said we had also been using the Sugarloaf Nursery up in Sunderland okay. uh, as well. And I know we've used Wanzix before as well. So I'll just, I guess I'll, I'll check in with Alan and see what makes sense. Um, and then I'm happy to set up that account with, with the buyer, um, you know, as a buyer at a nursery um, and work that out. Great. But so I, I, yeah. I was going to add, Sarah, I think that's, I think that's important, like, because that money won't actually be part of our budget in like a visible way, just keeping tabs on that to, so that we have a sense of how, like what our funds are and what's available. Um, yeah, and because it's a DPW account, there I'm sure that there's going to be formal forms to right. or avenues to follow to set that up. Um, so I'll touch base with Alan, and then I will keep track of how it works in some sort of Excel sheet, which I can share. Um, but I'll just start to include that as part of the treasurer's report. Great, thank you. Um. The next is social media. I don't know if there's anything to add. We did talk about it and Shoshana's not here. Julian, do you have anything to add about social media? Uh, not really. Um, no, the only thing I did have that was interesting, but I completely forgot it right now. Uh, oh, right. Um, was about the account. Um, did we ever get the overtime uh, budget solved for that money that was leaving the account? You mean the payroll deductions? Yeah. Yeah, Alan took care of that. Great. And Bennett, nothing on the website, I assume? Okay. No, we're all busy people. I appreciate how much we do get done, but just... Uh, there's more we could do when we have time. So, yeah. All right. Uh, let's move on to the agenda items. I'm going to go get a cough drop too in a second, but the Mary Maple love letters. That's Britt. You want to talk about that? I'll be right back. Yeah, I have no update on that. I will say that, you know, I'm in the process of um, 
where I have now officially brought in two students who will be working on this like Amherst urban forest initiative that Dave Bologna, Bologna Arts and I kind of brainstormed around a little bit at the first um, inventory training. Um, and so my hope is that those, part of the work of those students will maybe be also to identify grant opportunities and like help us think through that a little bit or just like move it forward a little bit in ways that I just haven't had the capacity to. Okay. What I just realized is I do not have the, like I'm logged into the Shade Tree account on Instagram, but I don't have the password to it that I can share. So Britt, if you wanted to send me absolutely anything, um, that would be amazing. And I can just post it. Um, just email it to me is perfect. So you're saying that I should not directly post anything. If I want something posted, I will send to you and you will post it. If that, if you could do that, that's great. Because I can't seem to get the password. Whose email is it attached to? Uh, it's attached to the shade tree email. Well, why don't okay. we go in and change? I feel them? like it would be easier to just change the password and give me the password. Yeah, yeah sure. We'll move that. one step. Yeah, so let's do that. I just don't have the login for that, I don't think. For the email. So but we need to show up for that. Exactly. Precisely. Okay. Yeah. Sorry so for the confusion. We'll wait for Shoshona's return. Correct. Okay. okay. Uh, the individual tree request policy is next. Ellen, you're working on this, I think. If you unmute first. Sorry. Yeah, no. I have that. Um, I think I shared it in the past, but um, I can share my screen if people want to read it. I think I sent it to the actually to everybody. Yeah, you did. Um, okay. If you can share it though, that'd be good. Ooh. Um. This was a question. Should we add an email here where residents can make their requests? Um, if we put out something in writing, we should do that. I think uh, right now it's just a policy that we can put up on the website. Um, or maybe under the, the new page that Bennett's going to do for tree requests. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, even a Google form, a link to a Google form where they click on it and then there's a Google form where they're filling out specific things like what is your address? Why are you requesting a tree? Do you have a specific kind of tree in mind? Um, are you able to water the tree in the future? Are you going to help plant it? Um, then a Google form will be sent to the email address automatically, but it will collect that information. So that might be a good way to do it. Hmm. Good idea. The town has um, a forum center. Um, I don't know if we want to use that or not, but uh, like if people request to join the committee and things, it goes through that. Hmm. Although I I mean, a Google form can be put together in like five minutes. So yeah. that might just be easier with fewer barriers. But um, I, I yeah. think the language of the tree request policy looks good. Thank you. I would I would vote to approve this if it needs that. Um, just one thing it it goes to a Google form. Who gets that? Who receives that? The chair oh, of the I, committee. Yeah, yeah, I would have. I mean, we have like a a tree committee email, right? Yeah, it should go to the tree committee email. Yeah, I would just send it directly there. But to approve the policy. Um, we don't have to worry about that stuff. I'd like to get that approved if we have approval. Other comments about this policy? No? All right. All in favor? Aye. Okay. That passes unanimously. Thank you, Ellen. Sure. I also did the native tree policy, but... <laughs> <that next>? okay. <laughs> um. Yeah, the Amherst, I don't know if you need me to read it. Um, 
but it's committed to selecting and planting trees that will thrive in their environments. The committee plants native tree species whenever possible, but due to cost availability and the susceptibility of many native trees to disease and pests, non-native species are selected as well. Um, tree committee plants a diversity of species to prevent the potential loss of many trees at one time, as when the town's American elms experienced rapid decline due to Dutch elm disease or the current loss of ash trees. Yeah, I added the ash tree bit. Should it be yeah. and or, or? Yeah. I think or is the correct language. Okay. Great. Do we know oh, what is the cause of it? Should I add that too? What's that? The cause of the ash tree decline. You could say, or, or the, and the current loss of ash trees due to emerald ash, the emerald ash borer. Um, the only thing that I would add is um, the word sometimes. Um, Non-native species are sometimes selected as well. But otherwise I think it looks good. Oh, yeah, like right, right there. Yeah, and again, I mean, my previous comments of like, this is, not necessarily a policy, but it's like a statement about. So maybe we yeah. say native tree statement. I think that's nice. Yeah, policy makes it a little <laughs> like it's got to conform to bylaws. Yeah, there, there aren't any like we're not suggesting there are any guidelines or anything here. Um, okay. Just that like we tried we try to do it and it's really about picking trees that will do well. The bore with an A? No, you oh, that's got right. it right. Yeah. Okay. I'd put uh, capital E for emerald, just. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. These are to? these are on our Google Docs. So <laughs> whoever want needs them, they are here. This just should not be included on anything, obviously. That's just a question for us, but. Okay. okay. Um, great. Do we approve the native tree statement? All in favor? Oh, any other comments? Yeah. All in favor? Yeah. Okay, good. That's a great accomplishment tonight. Yay, yay team. <laughs> Thank you, Ellen. Sure. Okay, oops, I'm mowing my backyard. Hold on. Okay. Um, what's next? Uh, Second Saturday plantings for October. I believe we're going to do the um, the tree nursery. Uh, I wish Alan was here because I have some questions about that. But um, everyone knows where it is, right? On Station Road. Yeah. It's just the DPW. No, Station Road. I don't know where that is. Uh, right before the bike path. You know, you go down from the um, Munson Library down the hill. Near that path. temporary bridge. Okay, I know where the temporary South Amherst Common Bridge is. Down the hill toward the bike path. That's large horse farm right near the temporary bridge that the town water department, I believe, has taken over. Ellen, you're muted. Yeah. No, I know. I'm sorry. It's an abandoned horse farm. It looks very empty. All the um, it's a little overgrown in the paddocks, and all the fences are kind of falling down. Great. <laughs> All right, so we'll plan that the for October. Building. Um, we'll have a work day there. Um, and we'll, with all this new stuff about contacting the Indy and Phyllis, we'll have a big crowd of volunteers for that. Um, yeah. And then um, Henry, yeah, we had a good, good work day Saturday. I'm um, sorry. Before we jump to that, I'm sorry, Henry. Before we jump to that, um, I haven't driven by today, um, but I know it's really, um, if the tree nursery is going in those paddocks, it really needs to be mowed or the town needs to do something first before we can really get in there. Um, it's just wild and it will be tons of like machete type work and yeah, the we town get, we plan. wouldn't even get to planting. It would just be clearing. And maybe that's our job. I don't know. But the town has a pretty large forestry mower with the highway division um that they use to mow roadsides along like country roads. Maybe we could have them do that or let tree and grounds or one of us borrow it. I don't know. 
But then okay. once it becomes a nursery, it will require regular mowing between the pots, right? So like, is there, can we mulch it? Can we? We will mulch by the trees. I have a okay. scythe that you're all welcome to borrow. <laughs> Actually, I love scything. I I could do some of that. So it does seem very satisfying. But um, <laughs> are the trees? Um, maybe this is my ignorance. Are the trees going in pots, or are we planting them in the ground? They'll go in grow bags that we dig okay. and put into the ground, so that okay. the roots are protected. So, from yeah, them. and what okay. I'm saying is, like, once we have rows of grow bags, it's that those large scale mowers are no longer going to be feasible. So like this question of like, what is the maintenance plan? I think is one to consider. Yeah. And, and the, the paddock itself, um, as I said, the fence is kind of falling down, you know, I think that's where we're going. I'd like confirmation from Alan that that is indeed where the nursery will be. That and, is. You know, obviously it's been um, sawdust and, other things for years and years. That's why I was concerned about the trees going into the ground there. Like if we needed to do, you know, a few layers of soil or excavate the all the manure and everything else that's been in there for for years. So maybe there is another, maybe there is an action item there that needs to happen before, right? Because there's not going to be another meeting before we meet there. That will be the first Saturday and then the second. No, actually, we, Saturday. So, how does it fall in October? Will the meeting right. come we meet the first? Plans? Okay, then we meet. We'll first. meet on the we'll meet on the tenth, and the second okay. Saturday is the fourteenth. Okay, so we'll have four <laughs> days. Uh, no, no, no. So, I, I meet with Alan around okay. the first of the month every. So I plan the meeting. And okay. Everything. So I'll talk to him about mowing and soil. Okay. Okay. Because yeah. we'll need supply, like, yeah, we'll need supply. We'll Otherwise, supply, it's just going to show yeah. up and then there won't be anything for us to do. No, I'm sure he'll provide the supplies. We'll buy the seedlings. We have to pick the okay. the types. I think we might have talked about that already, but um, yeah, it'd be really good if he was here tonight. Not, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. These are good questions for him. Yeah. Um, are we allowed to, I guess we can't ask him these questions through email is that a violation of open meeting no, law no that's fine as long as uh you know we're not really supposed to ask the whole group but questions i think is okay we can't really discuss policy okay but right things like this i think we can do and and i would say we'll also need to build in you know at least in in our discussions with the folks in greenfield who do their nursery you know it sounds like they have a winter plan where they push everything together and then bundle them together, right? The, there will be winter preparations that we as a committee will need to take care of and budget time for. If we grow them in the ground, you know- No, they, right they grow them the above ground too. They grow them above ground. But if we, I think right. we, when we did it last time, we did it at my property and we put the bags okay. below ground. Oh. You don't have to worry about moving them and all that stuff. They and then with, you can dig them up and they will not have spilled beyond their container. Uh, Is that the idea? The, well, the grow bags actually encourage roots to go through, but you don't get right. any large roots going through. Okay. The grow bags prevent that. So you get fine feeder roots and those break off and reform pretty easily. Um, but as long as the trees aren't in there too long, it's not a problem at all. We had a couple of the trees, the hazelnuts we grew last time that we're in the grow bags for too many years and those okay. were ridiculous to get off, but okay. usually it's not hard. Yeah. So. Yeah. I'm just not sure the quality of the soil around <laughs> the grow bags. Um, if we put them in the ground, um, I'd love to, and again, not sure if this is our volunteer work or town responsibility, but I, in addition to, to fixing the fence, um, I'd love to paint it and make it nice, bright white and look good. And I'd love to, put out a sign something about you know public shade tree you know nursery you know something to that effect or I don't know we could use one of the ones well someone would steal it probably but <laughs> about uh I think Bennett did a clever one about you know shade will be here in 20 years or something yes. future site <laughs> of shade or something. yeah yeah <laughs> but just something so people I, I don't know maybe a sign is 
asking for trouble, but there aren't that many college kids in the, in the area. It's, it's a pretty, um, it's very farmy. Yeah. It, yeah. It might bring in trouble. I don't know, but it's not a bad idea. We will be putting up um, deer fencing also, or, you know, rabbit fencing. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Another reason to get the fence looking better. Okay. I'll check with Alan about all these things. Okay. And um, I, I, drive by it all the time I can take some photos um, tomorrow and just share them with everyone so you can see the current state yeah, great good I also have a ton of um, I was just moving things things around here in the basement and I realized I have a I think I have a ton of like red barn colored paint so not white paint but anyway my point is we probably all have some paint cans that I don't want to throw away but <laughs> I could you know what I mean like I don't want to just you never know what to do with old paint, but this would be a good use for it. So happy to donate. Ellen is a curator. She has an aesthetic <laughs> sensibility. She's I could see, I could see her quietly. You can see on her face that she's horrified by the idea. She was <laughs> recoiling at barn, oh, yes. barn no. red. I, I oh, would use God. the red. I would use your red paint to paint the barn and then keep the fence white. <laughs> that would be very New England and beautiful. Great. Okay, can we move on? Yeah, <laughs> I'll check with Alan about all these things we brought up. Um, UMass interns. Yes, so I put out a call for student undergraduate students to help out for credit um, with this idea of the Amherst Urban Forestry Initiative, which is what Dave and I, Dave Bloniertz and I and others had kind of talked about um, at the first training for the tree inventory stuff at Kendrick Park last last month, whenever that was. Um, and there was a lot of response. Um, I ended up bringing two students in. It could have been more, but honestly, I ran out of time before the ad drop period ended, which was yesterday, and I was gone all weekend. It was just kind of crazy. Um, so I have two students who will be working. Um, I think it is six hours. One is going to be eight hours a week, and one is going to be six hours a week from oh. now through December with the possibility of doing that again in the spring and they will be available really for whatever we as a committee think would be helpful, including the inventory, including the Mary Maple stuff. One of them is a certified arborist um, who lives in Connecticut. She has just transferred to UMass from a community college my understanding is that she has worked with Eversource, uh, which is an interesting dimension to it. But if, um, you know, if we're getting, you know, she's going to college for the for the first time as an older person and thinking about things in a different way. And so um, I think it will be to our great benefit, hopefully, to have a, another, you know, a certified arborist who can certainly help with tree inventory training. Um, and, um, you know, it's really, I, I, I look to the committee for guidance on like what it would be helpful to have these folks work on around, um, this, around all this stuff. Um, the other one is a senior at the Stockbridge School of Agriculture, um, who is kind of more on like the human social side of things, but also has experience with tree identification and has taken lots of like urban forestry classes. So I will meet with them this week and get a sense of, you know, give them a sense of like what, what we're hoping to do. Yeah. So uh, first thing comes to mind would be the second Saturday plantings. Yep. Another would be, you know, invite them to the meetings. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if that counts for the hours, but I think. Sure. That yeah, it does. And then, um, you know, I don't, you know, if they have skills with social media, they could do some of that stuff, uh, writing, 
you know, all the things we're not getting to that we mentioned today or that we're, we're taking on that are overloading us. Um, but if nothing else, then just work on the inventory because the inventory is going to be a lot of hours of work. Yeah. And then see us, the, we, I don't think we want to use all our second Saturday said, I want to keep planting, but, um, right. you know, I, I see that as being extra time that we're going to be working. Right. So the, in, I have been thinking, you know, the inventory planning, outreach and training, yeah. um, the physical inventory itself going. Yes. Tree to tree and, yes. Um, actually tree. doing the, um, just taking some notes here. I had also been hoping that they might be helpful in, you know, I had created those two documents last month that I shared with everyone. One um, related to all of the um, public housing in Amherst. You know, can we investigate possibilities for collaboration with these communities and what might that look like? Um, so developing, you know, and Alan had mentioned like, okay, how can we actually develop like a plan related to trees um, over, you know, one year, three years, five years, you know, what are, what is our long-term plan? What are our long-term goals, um, including, you know, from an environmental justice perspective. So that was one thing I was hoping to have them, or I'm planning to have them work on. And then the other is around this subject that has come up often for us of communicating the benefit of trees to the public. How do we do a better job of engaging with the public and getting people to recognize that trees are really important and we shouldn't just be chopping them down because they drop leaves and nuts and little spiky balls on our driveway. Yeah, that's great. So, Okay, so I will keep everyone posted on that, um, and hopefully they you will meet them at the the next meeting um, or at the next um, public. You know, uh, I guess it would be the nursery event. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, that sort of leads into the uh, tree inventory. We already talked about the nursery. Um, we. Um, Bennett and Julian and I and Bennett's son came down and then this woman joined us who had just read about it on Facebook because they had just posted there. And she's a certified arborist, just moved here from Oregon and her oh. family's in this area, but she couldn't get a job here. So she's going to be end up in Dover, New Hampshire and working for the New Hampshire Department of Forestry or the U.S. I think she was working for the University of New Hampshire. I could be wrong in their extension. Yeah. Okay. But it was through uh, the New Hampshire State Forestry Division, whatever. So, yeah. Yeah. And she was great. And she came, none of us came prepared to do tree inventory. You have to be able to measure the trees. And she had her vest with all the stuff. And in one pocket, she had the thing to measure the diameter of the trees. And uh, she was great. And um, she won't be here all the time, but she really wants to be helping us, our committee. And um uh, she, I think she had a really good time. She was trying to join tonight, but uh, I guess she couldn't get in. So I did send her the invite, by the way. I haven't heard back, but um, oh, yeah. I finally got that done. But yeah, that was great. So her name was Lindsay. Um, yeah, it was great. So she stayed with us the whole time. Um, and we, we just sort of randomly selected trees at uh, Fort River School. And then we went to... Um, Brent keeps dropping Crocker. Us. Crocker Farm. Did you get a cracker? Yep. And we did some trees there. Uh, mostly, I don't know how useful the data was. It was mostly just to get more training. And uh, it was very interesting. We, uh, at Crocker Farm, we, uh, yeah, we inventoried two uh, crab apple trees. And then I happened to notice that one of them had a little tag on it. And it said that it was a, um, a black, not black gum, a black haw viburnum. I was like, that's not a black haw viburnum. But, you know, it just looked all wrong. But I started looking at it. Well, it has opposite leaves. The apple doesn't have opposite leaves. And uh, we figured it was a black haw viburnum. So that was a good learning experience to not just jump to conclusion. It has these fruit that are round. It, they didn't look like black haws. They looked like apples, crab apples. So, um, yeah, to be careful. And we had a lot of discussions about, you know, you have to, judge the quality of the tree, the health of the tree. And um, 
So, so that was interesting. It was good. It was good, good practice for us. And I think I'm ready to actually start doing it. And I don't know how about you, Julian and Bennett. I feel similarly. Yeah, I, I would love to get started. How did we find that app? Like, Dave, um, uh, how- Dave. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he trained us at the. Um, was that last month? Whenever that was. I assume it's the only app for doing that. I can't imagine there's like 20 different tree inventorying apps. I found I myself app, first. Yeah. I think it's an app designed for something completely different that they have just yeah. found to be useful in recording information like that. It was designed yeah. for epidemiology studies. That's right. It's yeah. Called huh. Epic Collect. But there are other apps. That apparently. makes sense. So yeah. You'd be surprised there are other apps for this. But um, the question that for Alan is, how does that tie into the town tree inventory? And he wasn't really sure about that either. And then we took a bunch of notes of things that we would like to improve on the app. So um, Julian has that. We'll talk to, you're going to talk to, you're going to email both Alan and Dave, right? With those. Yeah, you were just going to send me Dave's email and then I was going to email them. I did, didn't I? I don't think so. I, yeah. I'll do it again. I'll make sure I did it. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. So it's good. Yeah. We missed all of you, the rest of you, but it was good. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, so it's 646. To try to, sorry, yes, um, one quick question. I'm sorry I missed the training. Um, when you say get ready, to, you know, get started, where are we recording all this information? It's going into an app or is it going into an Excel spreadsheet? Like, what is it? No, it goes into the app and then Alan and Dave's job is going to be to figure out how that gets into the tree inventory itself. Okay. So we collect the data and then, you know, it's on our phone and then we upload it to wherever it goes there. And then someone can look at that data and review it and somehow figure out how to tie that into the tree inventory. And so there's something on the app that has the location, exact location pinpointed so that yeah, will make sense. Okay. It has a GPS, so you stand there, click on renew location, then you click on the next thing, and it has the date and the Let's team. Ask the questions, yeah. We all did team A. We didn't really figure out anything else. And then, yeah, it asks, it's all prompt, and they're all required questions, or mostly required questions. Cool. <laughs> so, Thank you. Yeah. Um, were you there for the training with Dave, or you haven't been there at all? Ellen. I missed I think, the training on Saturday. No, but how about when Dave? Ellen was on, I think she was on vacation for that one. Yeah, okay. no, I haven't had haven't any. Done it all, yeah. So it's it's pretty intuitive. Um, and uh, we'll do teams of, probably teams of two or maybe more people with one person who's experienced. And then as more people get experienced, we can branch out. So, yeah. Do all you right. have to know the, what the tree is to do it? Like, it helps. You have to yeah. become an expert first in identifying every tree before you can fill that information out, I guess. Well, we used some apps when we had questions. Um, if you can get to the genus, that's pretty good. You know, it could also be that somebody reviews it and goes and checks, oh, this is this, you know. So yeah, you you can skip the species name. You can you have to put in some name, but you could do a genus name and I've I've never used one of those apps, but I feel like it is essential to have like if I did it again, I would download the app for identifying trees in the wild because mm-hmm. otherwise, it seems like there's a lot of stuff you measure that I don't know. I don't know how useful some of this stuff is, depending, you know, but it seems to me that the species is the type of tree is important. Yeah. And there's so um, many variants. Yes. Of maple or whatever. So, exactly. Yeah. So the, I, species, the species identification apps are not foolproof. Right. Um, and so one of the things that we had discussed at that initial training with Dave was creating some kind of system wherein like an expert or someone who has significant um, expertise with in tree identification is like the leader of a smaller group of people so that they're confirming the identifications and making sure that ev- all of the data is usable. Because Dave mentioned some number of hours that it take that they recommend for like getting up to speed with tree identification it's like 60 hours or something that like i don't think every person who's participating in this inventory is going to be able to log before actually 
making recordings. And so maybe one of the things that the students that I'm working with in collaboration with the committee can talk about is like, what, what do we want our model for um, these teams for identification and um, inventorying to look like? And that could be another question, another thing to put on the app, um, you know, tree species, and then is this a confirmed confidence you know, level or like, yeah, yeah right. You know, right. Are you sure this is the right tree kind of thing? <laughs> it wouldn't be a criticism be like, right. Or do you, does someone need to review this? Yeah. Yeah. So Julian, right. can you add that to the list of uh, things to send to Dave and Alan? Already did it. Good. All right. Great. Uh, can we move on? Mm -hmm. So the town tree tour, um, I thought, I came up with the idea of doing it October 15th. Uh, Ellen, I wanted to check with you as someone who was my partner on that last time. Um, but uh, Sunday the 15th. Yeah, I mean, it It should be fine. I'm, I'm in a little bit of a holding pattern right now with my father so um it's hard for me to commit to anything but um yeah but yeah <laughs> so what mean, we need to get out and go look at all the trees and make sure they're still standing or see if there's mm -hmm. any changes to the thing so, okay i'll give you a call and we'll try to figure out a time we can get together and do that walk okay Good. anyone else want to be a part of that organizing the you're all welcome to come of course but organizing the tour i'm happy to help a little bit with that okay so yeah it's like the walk different. and i because I, I haven't been a part of it in the past um yeah okay I, I, I'm, I'm my fall's pretty crazy but but little things here and there on the tree tour i can i can you know the walk and the actual running of the thing on the 15th i can be helpful with great all right i'll um I'll send you both uh, a couple of suggestions of dates that we could try to do the, uh, you know, a, a preliminary walk and see what, see how it's changed since last time. So, okay, good, thank you. Uh, the library trees um, and also the apple tree that um, the Historical Society apple tree, Alan was gonna try to get someone to identify the uh, variety of apple and he's not here. So does anyone else know anything about that? No. All right. Uh, state level initiatives. Uh, the thing with Mindy is happening now. So um, anyone who can go to that when we're done is good. Uh, she's not doing that thing, but that she sent out. And um, yeah, I haven't really done much else. I have put out a few feelers to contact other people. And there's a, I heard from a, I think Long Meadow is setting up a, a new, there's a new tree warden. Long Meadow, East Long Meadow, and I got a contact from them saying they wanted to know, you know, how we set up the uh, our tree committee and how that all works and how we work with Alan. So I had a conversation with them. So that's good. Um, significant tree ordinance, anything new? There I know. And the solar bylaw group, Julian. Nothing new. Okay. And uh, Sarah, we did hours before you joined. So were your hours for the last two months? Seven. Okay. And uh, any other comments or anything else? The one thing that we keep forgetting to bring up, Henry, is that I have that table in my barn. Ah, the table. Yes, totally forgot. All right, let me put that on the agenda for next month. Okay. Well, all right. We can talk about it now, but uh, that's fine. I mean, so so somebody who came to me in the winter and took a big piece of the Mary Maple made a really beautiful table out of like a pretty large piece and has donated it to the committee, and it is in my barn. And so the question is like, what are, what do we want to do with this? And the options include like auctioning the table, raffling off the table, donating the table to the, uh, to the town so that it can be displayed. Um, right. 
Can you yeah. possibly take a photo or two of it? And also the dimensions, like, is it like a dining room table or no. is it a side table? Oh. It's small. I have a oh. picture of it somewhere. Let me see. Henry has pictures. It's like yeah. a side, it's like a low side table. Side table. Yeah. Okay. Um, but it's really beautifully done. And the woman doesn't even live in Amherst. She lived here briefly. And then I think her child went to school here. And so she felt some connection to it. And she's a woodworker. And so she came and got the piece and then took it to her studio in Maine and then brought it back like five months later um, as a donation to the committee. So oh, that's so nice. Um, awesome. Yeah. There it is. I got it. All right. Um, I will share my screen. Um, it's the table's gorgeous. Yeah. Oh, oh wow. Wow. that's great. So it's small. Um, the base pieces are, I think, Norway maple. No, this is Norway. Hey, uh, yeah, uh, I don't remember what we Norway. said the base pieces were made from. <laughs> but then, the whole thing is probably what, like, I don't know, like 30 inches. Yeah, two and a half feet. Yeah, about that. And stands maybe 18 inches tall. And then the butterfly that's holding the crack together is black walnut. So. Oh, it's yeah, it's really, it's really beautiful. Yeah. I, I bet people would pay for that. I mean, I don't know how much we could get, but could be a fun like online raffle or. Yeah. Yeah, a raffle well, or an auction. And then, you know, again, like we could also still do a raffle or an auction and or say like who wants to donate to this and then we'll like give it to the town hall or something. I don't know. There are there are lots of options. Yeah, I'd like to see it in the new library or something like that. Yeah. yeah where it's public. Yeah, I, I would agree. I think it would be great to see it in town hall or maybe in the new library, new elementary school, one of those type things. I wonder if we could time it, if we donate it or whatnot um, with like the tree lighting, you know, around the holidays. Oh, that's, that's a nice idea. That's yeah. a great idea. Yeah. Uh, let's, uh, I'll, I'll get that in the agenda. Next month, we'll talk about it. Um, think about what we really want to do with it though, before then. Yeah. Okay. That'd it really good, would. That'd be a good I, PR for us. <laughs> yes. And I hadn't thought about the library until one of you mentioned it, but that would be a great, a yeah. little, little far off, but that would be so great. Yeah. And I also still have that whole sculpture that my students led um, oh, yeah. with the participation of like dozens and dozens and dozens of community members. So, you know, thinking about a future for that might also be worth talking about all right good um anything else we need to talk about all right bennett you'll send the minutes out to me and uh i'll get them out to everyone and um yeah that's too bad alan couldn't be here but i think it was a good meeting so we'll see you, you all yeah, you're welcome. Thank, we'll see you all sometime soon, next month. If not. Thank yeah. you. All right. Thank you, everybody. Hey, Thank Britt, you. one yes. second. I saw you were at Milkwood. Yes. It was oh amazing. Oh my gosh, I'm so jealous. <laughs> it was amazing, Ellen. I'll have to tell you about it. And I yeah. heard that Sophie is coming to the museum yes. in December. So yeah. um yeah, I told her we'll we'll connect when she's in town, but okay. it was amazing. It was great. It was so cool. Yeah, it's very cool. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Bye. Right. Bye, everyone. We hope <laughs> Alan has a nice vacation. Yes, on the record. Yeah. Yep. <laughs>